So while I was in Sacramento, I attended the Tea Party Caucus meeting. And that's when I saw our next speaker, Roxanne Beckford Hope. I was out there and I just, all of a sudden my jaw just dropped. My first thought is we have got to get her in Redlands because she is so funny, she is so engaging, she's so motivational. I mean, you, there, it's, I don't want to steal her thunder, but it's easy to see. You're going to see easy why she got a standing ovation. Um, anyway, I went up to her, gave her my card. I said, come on out and speak to us. She agreed. Unfortunately, Carl DeMaio had a, came, I think it was a family illness. Roxanne stepped in the last second, so thank you, Roxanne, for doing that. Roxanne is a Hollywood actress. And she did it with almost no notice. Roxanne is a Hollywood actress who turned conservative activist. She was in the movie Bewitched in 2005. Something's Gotta Give in 2003. And Father of the Bride in 1995. She's a native of Jamaica. And she left because of socialism and the violence it created. So Roxanne, come on up. Thanks for the no pressure introduction there, John. That was really nice. Um, this has been a big night. I'm getting to sit in, um, in the chair of honor, where Richard, I think, would normally sit. And uh, you guys have a great turnout. And I just want to thank you so much for having me. And you were right. I asked Greg for directions. And he said, you get on the freeway and you go east until you go back to America. <laughs> and look, here you are. And I was really excited to see that. Um, I am from Jamaica, which is the small island, not in the New York part, even though people think I'm a New Yorker. Um, I was 11 years old when my country decided to flirt with uh, democratic socialism, which is socialism. And I think the thing that people don't understand, especially the millennials and Generation Z, 70% of whom think that socialism sounds like a good idea, is there's two ways that it works. One is at the tip of a spear, the other is at the point of a gun. There is no volunteers. There are no volunteers in socialism. They're taking your stuff. And they're taking your liberty. And I think that's what America means to me. I mean, I think, I don't have my glasses on, so I can't tell, and I couldn't tell by looking anyway. But how many of you are born in the USA? Woo! You are lucky buggers. Because let me tell you, if you weren't, I was born a British subject, a subject of the Queen. So when she came to Jamaica to, for a once every 20 year visit, we stood on the side of the road and I learned to curtsy and bow and scrape. Americans don't do that. And even though I came here legally in 1976, it took me, I'm gonna carry the one to do like 25, years to become a citizen because I wasn't yet American. I had my green card, which is pink. It's not green, don't ask me why. Um, but until you become an American, until you fall in love with this country and want to make things, le make things right, you shouldn't become a citizen. I find nothing more grotesquely offensive than the discussion about a pathway to citizenship for people who broke in and came in unasked and through the back door. There is no pathway to home ownership if you break into my house. There is no pathway to citizenship if you break into my country. So that out of the way, um, I am here first and foremost as a substitute for Carl DeMaio. So since this is California, I now identify as Carl DeMaio. <laughs> Everybody, I'm Carl DeMaio. Um, I actually wouldn't even have to do that much work. Um, Carl, as you all know, did amazing work with the Yes on Six campaign, and we fell short because the other side cheated, because they changed the name so that even up until the last minute, my mom was going, I'm gonna vote no on six because I want that repeal, and I was like, no, 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 it's yes on the no, and it was very confusing for so many people. But what we learned and what Carl created is so important for all of us. So this is my Carl part of the speech. It's, there's so many things that go wrong here in California. There's so many bad ideas. There's so many just horrible encroachments on liberty that we are like, squirrel, wait, oh, what about this? Oh, wait, what about guns, the babies? We have to pick one thing at a time 
and crush them with it. So that's why they first went for the recall of Josh Newman. They said, we're gonna use the gazelle strategy. Who's the weakest link here? And they found Josh Newman and they went after him and they took him down. So now we just need to keep doing that until we get rid of the supermajority. So if you have a phone or a pen or something, write down reformcalifornia.org. If you didn't already, how many of you helped or uh, signed uh, petitions for the gas tax repeal or circulated them to people? So you're probably already signed up, but if you haven't, go, because there's gonna be new campaigns, because he's gonna help focus us on the one thing at a time. And what's coming up next? One of the really good things is gonna, thanks to Rebecca, and then the next generation, the Janus decision, it's gonna be a campaign to get government workers to realize that they can get back their union dues. And that's gonna be awesome. Because when people realize that you are taking money out of their pockets, that's really kinda huge. It's about $800 to $1,200 annually, so he's feeling really good about that. So please go to that website and sign up because we'll be doing statewide actions. Website. reformcalifornia.org I think I'll fix, it. If I'll fix it if I'm wrong but I'm pretty sure it's reformcalifornia.org so why am I here what did John hear me say that he wanted me to repeat that I can't repeat because I don't really write speeches I just sort of go with the flow my most important message I think is that y'all are really weird and I used to be a normal person, and then I got weird too. The truth is, normal people don't think about politics. They, they don't have time. You have, a, you have a family, you have a life, you have a business, you're trying to do stuff. Um, ah, there you go, thank you so much. See, now you know it. Um, so normal people don't think about politics. They certainly don't go out to a nice restaurant on a Thursday evening and talk about politics and listen to people talk about politics. So I was like a normal person <clears throat> and I did, wasn't involved. But guess what? Elections are only won by moving the people who are not interested in politics and motivating them to vote. The problem isn't just that evangelicals don't vote, and I'm part of the group too with Duran Reese. It's not that they don't vote, it's that half of them weren't registered to vote. Here in California, so many of us have just given up. We're kind of like the battered wife who just is sort of flinching and waiting for the next arm to get to backhand us. So we've given up because we feel like it doesn't make a difference because there's an onslaught of illegal voting, of 17 and 18 year olds voting. They moved my polling place to a high school this year and they were doing provisional voting and same day registration for people that looked awfully, awfully fresh faced to me. But that's what they do. So we have to win past the margin of cheat. So what did I do when I finally got involved and discovered that there was a Republican Party in LA, which I didn't know for a long time. I got suckered by Jessica Patterson, yes, our new chair of the California GOP. So whether you wanted her or you didn't, this is how good she is. She got me to run. And I have four children at home. And I was like, Jessica, I can't run. And she was like, yes, you can. Do you want me to have you talk to someone who's done it? I can hook you up with someone. Oh, why don't you just come to this meeting and we'll do a little teaching and a little, and the next thing you know, my name's on the ballot. And I spent a year away from my family, which turned out to be not such a bad thing because three of the girls were teenagers. And so it was kind of a break for me, my poor husband, but it was totally a break for me. It's so important for the normal people to wake up. And how do we do that? I mean, we all get it. And if you go to a gun show, yes, you're right. No one's gonna yell at you. They get it too. But how do we move people? So I talked about the four C's at the California convention, and of course, I immediately forgot what they were. But one of them is communism. That's what we're fighting. Jim Acosta should know better because people lash together gallon milk jugs and floaties to cross shark infested waters to escape communism and come to America. By the way, they're not coming to Jamaica. They're not coming to my country. <laughs> they're going to America. Why? Land of the free, home of the brave. 
That's why people come here. That's why caravans, by the way, are going 1,200 miles out of their way. The next contiguous country is where you should ask for asylum. It ain't the USA. Not by a long shot. And they're coming through California, not Arizona or Texas, because they know it's just a great big gaping open bucket for them. So the first thing you need to do is get this book. I'll let you take pictures of it without moving my hand. <laughs> it's called The Blueprint for Revolution. It's by the group of youth who started a movement that took down Slobodan Milosevic. Now, I know we talk about being behind the blue curtain here, but we're not getting shot at yet. So people who went through this for real have really good lessons. So just like Alinsky's Rules for Radicals, which I'm sure, how many of you know about Alinsky? Yeah. So those are good, but he was a really creepy guy. And I, I don't really, he like dedicated his book to Lucifer. That kind of creeps me out. So this one is great because it tells you how do you get a movement? How do you get grandmothers in, interested? How do you get young people interested? And how do, you, how do you deal with people who want to hurt you? And that's where we are. That was one of the biggest things when I ran for office that I had to decide. How sad is that? I had to be worried about the safety of my children. I took everything off Facebook. I don't have a personal Facebook page, Agnes knows, because I don't friend anyone. Um, I made a separate page. Every consultant, and by the way, anyone who's a Republican consultant in California is pretty much like a professional loser, because that's what they, their advice keeps leading to more and more losses. But there's a few good ones. But every one of them kept saying, you've got to have pictures of your family all over your website. I was like, so they can kidnap them, spit in their faces, and, just, and really make their lives hell at school? Uh, no. And, and by the way, my kids also don't go to a government school. They go to an incredibly expensive Episcopal school. Doesn't matter. The rot is in. How many of your kids in school right now, elementary or high school? Any of you? Grandkids? Do you know what's happening? My kids are, I have twins, the last two, surprise, uh, are in eighth grade this year, and they had two choices for their history class. No, not US history, world history, ancient history, history of Western civilization. No, it was a choice between global citizenry and social justice. Oh. One of my kids said to me, Mom, I got this assignment. I don't really understand it because I thought history was the past. I said, yes, I did too. But it's all about how discriminated against people are in various and sundry ways. My daughter, who's a, a senior in high school, applied to college this year. And I know a lot has, uh, has been talked about. Do you guys know Pete Peterson from um, Pepperdine? He does an amazing job. He ran for Secretary of State four years ago. And he does an amazing job there of uh, having diversity viewpoints and, and all sorts of stuff. And they talk about the importance of viewpoint diversity in college. It's too late. Every college essay starts like this. Given that global warming is the most important problem facing our country, what would you do about it? Essay number two. Nothing matters more at the University of XYZ than diversity. Explain to us why you're diverse, how you're nice to diverse people, and what you can do to add to our diversity. Those are basically the two essays at every college. And by the way, when you want to go on a college tour, you click on a link, you know, say date, time, your name, and your preferred pronoun, and who you like to have sex with or not. I kid you not. For Duke level, Ivy League level schools. So, the, politics is downstream from country, culture, and we have seeded education, we seeded movies, we seeded all the good stuff because we thought we would be polite. And that doesn't get us anywhere. So the first thing we're fighting is communism, we have to remember that. Best lesson I got out of this book, how do you fight that? How do you fight that with people who want to spit in your food? You guys didn't spit in our food, did you? I hope not. Um, how do you fight against people who think people are Hitler because they have an opposing view? Which is, you know, Hitler was Hitler. How do you fight that? You fight it with another C, with comedy and communication. Because People are so entrenched. It is, did, did Bill talk about the emperor's new clothes when he was here? It is so the emperor's new clothes. There's people walking around naked and no one has the guts 
to say, hey, dude, you're naked, because we're all so nice. But the fact is, there are opportunities every day. You don't need to have a treatise ready on the Federalist Papers. When the election happened, I went to a basketball game with my girls. I'm not white, if you can't tell, because my naturally curly hair. Um, but so my kids aren't white, and, but every other kid on the team was white, and all the parents were all huddled together in the bleachers going, oh my God, I can't believe Trump got elected. Maybe we should move. I know, I'm thinking of Canada. Are you thinking of Canada? And I let them talk about Canada for a little while, and then I went, how come you guys all want to go to Canada? Isn't that like super white? How come, how come you don't want to go to Jamaica or Mexico, where us brown people are? That's crazy, isn't it? And they all went, oh my God, no, I would totally go to Mexico. I love Mexico. I would, I would live in Mexico in a heartbeat. It's, 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 it's just a language. Um, make them own up to their own hypocrisy. They don't even realize they're doing it, and people, people don't call them on it because their ideas are so stupid. They're so stupid. LA City Council today said, oh God, no, go ahead, sue us. We would never take your property because you're living and defecating on and shooting up on our streets. That would be rude. But they banned straws <laughs> and plastic bags. I don't get that. You know what made me get into politics? It was the plastic bag ban. Do you know what I did the next day? I went online to a wholesale uh, surprise and bought a thousand blue plastic bags. I still have some in my car if anybody wants extras. Those things are great. I give them out all the time. I'm like, I know, where do you think the 10 cents is going to? I don't know either. What do you think? I mean, really give people little digs in their daily life. If someone smugly says, well, I have this reusable bag, say, I know, I had one too. And then one day I found a note from the small Chinese child that makes them for a dollar a day. Made me feel really bad about that. I love making their heads explode like that, right? So there's so many opportunities. Kurt Schlichter, who's a great writer and also here in Southern California, says the only real response to a lot of these concepts and ideas is just thinly disguised, barely suppressed laughter. What, what are you talking about? The, the number one and two girls in the Connecticut State Championships the other day both had, you know, equipment. Um, how is that fair? Point out the hypocrisy. So what else do we need? What's the third C that we need if we want to make a difference? And we need to, by the way, because California, sadly, is the blueprint. California is what they want to do with the rest of the country. They are introducing ballot harvesting in the rest of the country. They're banning those straws and those plastic bags. They're making, do, do you guys know about the vehicle miles travel yeah. ridiculousness? They're trying to turn Los Angeles into Manhattan. If I wanted to move to New York, I would have moved to New York, but I didn't. I came here because I didn't want to die when it got cold. Yeah. You know what they say about Chicago, right? Chicago is what happened when people from New York went, you know what, New York is great, but if it was only, it was only more crime and a little colder. Oh, oh look, here we go. So, um, sorry, my husband's from Chicago. I can't resist on that one. So the third thing we need in order to take back California, which is so important, is cash. Cold, hard cash. So one of the things uh, that happened when I took uh, Jessica's horrible advice and I ran for office. I ran for assembly in Los Angeles. The registration of Republicans in my district of Sherman Oaks in Studio City was 13.5%. 13.5% of people in my neighborhood are Republican. 10% of people think Elvis is still alive. So it was kind of above that, but I mean, it, the numbers were not good. And I was running against an incumbent um, and I had no money, and the, the LA GOP at the time was a, pretty much a sucking chest wound, so there was no help there. So what did I need? I needed cash. Now, Jessica told me that I needed to raise $100,000, and after I stopped laughing, I said, no, but seriously, because <laughs> who would give me $100,000 to lose? Because everyone said I was gonna lose. But I didn't want to be embarrassed. I'm embarrassing enough, I didn't want to be embarrassed more. So God bless my friends and my family, and I raised $30,000, and I spent it wisely. 
I even made, I think you guys, Greg, you sent out my email um, it, with my video. I made a campaign video. I don't know how many of you watched it. it cost me 800 bucks. Then I translated into Spanish for another 400. And I put it on TV. It ran the weekend before the election. Now, I still lost. It's a horrible story. Why did I bring it up? Oh, because you need money to do these things. You have to be smart with your money. But the people who run and sacrifice to run so that we'll have an R on the, on the ballot, and that's why I ran, because when I went to vote the last few times, there was no R except for the office of president. There, there was nothing. There wasn't even anyone running against my assemblyman. He was unopposed. I don't like coronations anymore now that I'm not English. I'm not a subject. I want a choice. I'm pro-choice. I'm pro-choice for light bulbs, for low flush toilets, and for elections. That, are the, those are the choices that matter. So the people who are putting their lives on the line for us and running, they need cash. I know people are disappointed in, uh, maybe mad at uh, the Republican Party as it, as it stands in Los Angeles or in the state of California. You may feel, what did they do with these millions of dollars? Because I didn't really see any of it come to my neighborhood. Give directly to a candidate. Because guess what? Look at your purses, ladies, or your shoes. Whatever that cost, write a check for that amount. Go online, give it to someone who can spend it wisely. It didn't take me $50,000 to make an ad, it was 800 bucks. If you guys have guns, you know how much you spend on those toys, come on. You can spare a few dollars for a candidate. So you may say, how do I find a candidate? Well, I'm here to tell you. So that's the fourth C, is candidates. We need candidates. We also need practice. Now, what John does with canvassing and putting the bags together, that's great. Ballot harvesting kicked our butts. We can have a conversation another time about why it was that the people whose job it is to pay attention to Sacramento didn't notice that the law that was passed about ballot harvesting would actually work for the Democrats. That's another day. But now we have to do it. Where can we do ballot harvesting? Ding, 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 ding. That's right. Churches. When you make people feel that they're part of a community like you guys are tonight, have a BYOB party. Bring your own ballot. And everybody and say, and someone you trust. Or say, you know what? I've got stamps for everybody. Let's all go mail them together. Not on the corner, because there's no mailboxes on the corner since September 11th, because they keep taking away things that make our life easier in order to make terrorism go away, but okay, whatever. So the point is that we can do things for candidates. Now are we going to have an opportunity to do this before 2020? Why, yes, we are. There are special elections going on right now. In Los Angeles County, Ricardo Lara won for, for insurance commissioner. His seat is empty. They have a supermajority in the Senate by that one seat. If we can flip that seat, wouldn't that be special? So right now, Jack Guerrero and Martha Flores are the two Republicans running for Senate District 33. There are nine Democrats and one Green. I'm not good at math, but when you split the vote in a top two world, guess what that means? Two Republicans could end up in the top two. And, and nothing will make that get repealed faster than it not working for Democrats, right? If, if it starts to work for us, it's gone. So, do what you can by, and by the way, Jessica is having on Sunday in Long Beach, they're having a fundraiser for Jack and Martha because the math only works if both Republicans end up in the top two. Because we saw time and time again, if you have 10 Democrats running and one Republican and the one Republican gets in, everyone coalesces around that one Democrat. So whoever's running against Morrell, make sure there's two of them. And if one of you has to sacrifice to be the other one, so be it. Um, and so you can go, Martha doesn't have her website up yet, but she will. Um, Jack is Jack Guerrero. I wrote it down, but I can't read it without, but yes, jackguerrero.com. That's J-A-C-K-G-U-E-R-R-E-R-O. Jack Guerrero, like the war, um, dot com. And you'll be able to find, I'll give you all the links you can do it. And Martha is marthafloresgibson.com.
Throw them 20 bucks. Throw them 50, throw them 100. It's cheaper than the $3,000 U-Haul that it'll cost to get yourself out of this state, which is the only way we're gonna be able to survive. I'm not moving, but that's what it would cost to move. You guys know about the U-Haul problem, right? It's like $900 to take a U-Haul here and 3,000 to leave. So make an investment in California's future. I actually wrote an article in American Greatness called California is Worth Fighting For, explaining how vital it is because it's not just conservatives who are leaving California and making it more and more blue. It's liberals who don't realize that the things they voted for ruined the state they loved, so they go to another state to ruin that one. And that's how you turn North Carolina blue. That's how you turn Nevada blue. That's how you turn Texas blue. So let's think very carefully about the battle we are in. Andrew Breitbart is right, it's war. It is absolute war. I could use bad words now, but I won't. So speaking about candidates, and I think I said this at the Tea Party and, um, and John found it a little amusing. We need candidates, but everyone has a gift. Everyone has a gift, you should use your gift. Seeing Whitney Houston saying that Anthem, what an amazing gift she had, and then she squandered it, and she destroyed it. But while she lived, she made a lot of people happy and she used her gift so wisely. Know what your gift is. Don't be a candidate if your gift is to be a drooling idiot. <laughs> and how do you know if you're a drooling idiot? Your spouse will tell you, A. But B, if you try to talk to people about politics and they back away, or you can't get onto your local radio station to make a comment without them cutting you off or bleeping you, and this is a conservative radio station, or you can't write an op-ed and get it printed in your paper, maybe the candidacy thing isn't for you. But you can support candidates, and you can find candidates, and you can help babysit their children while they're out running for office or something. In other words, know what your gift is and use it. If it's, or I'm a team mom, I, so I ran for office, I'll never do that again. That was the most horrible, I mean, it was great to meet people, but I'm an actor. It was, the, it was more narcissistic and greasy than acting. <laughs> How gross is it to every time you meet someone, you're sort of sizing them up for like how much money they can give you. And then if you're at an event, you're just like, well, it didn't happen if there's a picture. <laughs> Lean next to me, come here, roll your wheelchair over here so we can get a shot together. I mean, that's gross, right? That makes you not a good person. So I don't think I'll be doing that again. I did uh, offer to run for the LA GOP chair, lost by one vote, but guess what? I'm back in there working every day, volunteering, writing things for them, helping them, because we're all in this together. I just wrote an article for Steve Frank. I'm in touch with Travis Allen. I wish he had been able to communicate the way he does one-on-one. -on -one. He was so much better than, than his speeches, but we all need to work together. And when I asked Jessica what she wanted me to tell you guys, she said, we're all in this together. We can only win this together. She's, t I mean, look, it's like herding cats in a horrible, horrible way to get together all the disparate factions, but our stool can't stand with, with only two legs. I saw Steve Bannon a couple years ago and he said, it doesn't work without the establishment leg and the grassroots leg and the money leg and the, the people who don't realize that they're being conned. That's who we all need to aim our fire towards. There are people who don't understand my, I'm not gonna, it's a quasi-relative, a friend. Die hard liberal, die hard. Calls me one day and says, what, what, what can you do about, there's a homeless encampment outside my business. I was like, I know, you voted for it. <laughs> I can't really do anything. Oh, but here's what you can do. You don't have to be a Republican to vote Republican. I know it's icky, but in the privacy of the voting booth, you could maybe vote for someone who is not gonna 
put human feces on every doorstep. I'm just thinking that could be a step. One of the people I met in a, and Greg's gonna give me the boot, and I wanna take questions, so um, I'll, I'll try to go faster. One of the people I met at a, at a town hall neighborhood council meeting, he followed me out to my car and he said, gosh, I really like everything you have to say and I have a small business and I'm getting you know, the homeless thing outside in LA, it's horrible and I really, I really wish I could vote for you, but you know, the Republican thing and, and I guess the thing that, that really gets me the most is I'm a gay man. He said, not me, I'm not a gay man, he's a gay man. Um, but I could be a gay man, but I'm not. But uh, now there's anything wrong with that. But so he said, but I'm a gay man and I'm just, I'm really worried about a woman's right to choose. And I said, dude, if that's your number one worry, you're doing gay all wrong. Like, that should not be even in the top 10 of concerns for you. But I got him to see none of California's problems, not a single one was created, exacerbated, or made worse by Donald Trump. Not a single one is affected by the president except for the wall thing. That could be huge, huge. But the fact is, all our problems are homemade. They're all homegrown, every single one of them. The taxes we pay, the fact that the schools, you guys, one of the things I did as a candidate was go to get public policy training. What is going on in the schools if people knew they would riot? Full on, in the streets, riot, it is unconscionable that it has been allowed to stand. It is horrendous. And if we just spread the word and wake people up and go, you know, your kids can't go to a public school, no matter how much you spend on real estate in California. Isn't that weird? Who's been in charge? Oh, 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 I know. Let them realize, let them come to those realizations themselves. I mean, the, the most important message I think you need to give other people is that they're not alone. So some of you are like proud and out. You're all like Trump bumper sticker and stuff. I can't do that in LA because I like tires that are not flat. <laughs> so I, I don't do that. But what I did do is listen very carefully to people. They'll let their doubts out. So as I said, my kids go to this really awesome private school and it seemed that every other car was a Prius or a Tesla with a Hillary bumper sticker on it. But if you listen very closely, every once in a while someone would say something that made you go, hmm. And so I started collecting people. And I started an email that I would send to people and say, forgive me if I'm wrong, it seems that you said something a tiny bit conservative, and if in fact you are, not there's, I don't want to offend you in any way, but I'm having a gathering of little birds at my house next week. I got 60 parents the first time, none of whom were out, all of whom were scared to come. They all asked me to make sure there would be no pictures, no phones, and I'm talking about major, I mean, the school is ridiculously expensive. Like, and these people give tons of money, work major jobs, and they were scared. And they came to my house, and they saw people that they'd been friends with for 10 years, and went, oh, you, oh my God. They were so happy and relieved. Now, out here in America, that may be okay for you, um, but the rest of us behind the blue curtain, by the coast, it's not so easy. So be kind and be gentle. When, to your relatives and your friends who are like that and encourage them to say a little something because you never know who you could convince that they're not alone and that voting is worth it, especially in these special elections. So Senate District 33, super worth it. City Council in LA, friend of mine, Brandon Sario just qualified. He could use some money too. Sario for council.com. He's Finnish, S-A-A. R-I-O for council.com, C-O-U-N-C-I-L. So S-A-A-R-I-O, sorry for council. Um, there's not many Republicans running there either. There was one Republican on the LA City Council and he retired. So they're, they're the ones who voted 12 to zero that you can't do business with the city unless you disclose your relationship with the NRA. 
how about you disclose your relationship with the baby killers? Like, uh, let's make this even, right? So we don't need to tailor our message for different ethnicities, for different age groups, for different religions. We just need to deliver our message. Get out there, be proud, be convincing, be funny. Get this book and please, God bless you and God bless you all. Thank you for all you do. And I'll take any questions if you have any because they'd be funny from the trenches. I'm happy. Who's thinking of running and they want to know what it's really like or something? What do you? Yes. So at jackguerrero.com, you can find his fundraiser at um, his fundraiser is at. And this one, okay. So jackguerrero.com, on his calendar, he has his fundraiser tomorrow in the City of Commerce, and he has the one Sunday in Long Beach. Um, and you can also donate there, yeah. I have a question not for you, but for Jessica Patterson. Mm -hmm. Is it just you and Dion? Of course, the is with our Yes, because she suckered me. All right, and I think the number one here is a Jessica Patterson, who is the most likely a continuation of status quo of the Republican Party. Is she prepared to go all in on school choice in 2020 and for every resource that she has available, the party has available, is qualifying and passing school choice? Okay, so I can't speak for Jessica. I can channel her better than I can channel Carl. Here's what I've heard all the time from the party. They don't pick policy positions. They are like the logistics that, that grease the wheels that make things happen. I do know she personally finds that a great message and that was what like what the public policy briefing that I went to was hers where she ex where the explanation of what was going on was um, I would ask her that directly I'll see her on Sunday um, my problem was always that I thought Jim Brulte for example was a great speaker like avuncular good in a room and I was like why aren't you talking everywhere like why don't you go everywhere and talk to everyone and he said well that's not the job of the party the party is just to let the candidates do that. But we can't do that because we're so few in number. And so I'm hoping and thinking that one of the things Jessica will do will be more of, of being a spokesman and being out there and letting people know. Because yes, the school choice thing is the number one thing that I think would turn so many people. I forget who said it, but one of the, the worst thing you can say is, or the dumbest thing you can say is, you were always done it that way. Mm. So, you know, well, the party doesn't take policy positions, or we just yeah. do we do. Well, that's not the goal. Yeah, because it works so well. Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so if you were conveying the question. Absolutely. You have extended the invitation. Uh, but if this is harder, you have a chance to come here. No, because we're all in the same boat. Right. So, you can personally perhaps convey our invitation. Absolutely. And the truth is that school, I mean, I'm going to keep. Fighting, like I think, you know, I don't want to be like the chairman, but I want to be like the social chairman of the party. And I think, you know, put the party back in GOP. And I think it's really important to 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 speak in a, a, a play on the field where people get it. When they see what's going on with their kids, they get it. And I think that's huge, super huge. Anybody else have a comment? Come on down to the microphone. Not everyone at once. Oh, I feel so unpopular. I feel just like in my own house when all the girls look up at me and they're like, that's for dinner? So, Nothing else? So, so, so being from Hollywood, how do you influence, I mean, Bill Wills working on that, you're a friend of, he, of him. From being the inside, how do we develop the alternative institutions to produce entertainment? You just you don't have to have very in it. Um, so, Bill talked about that, I bet, um, when he was here. Don't give people your money. When they suck, don't give them your money. They don't, I mean, I, I don't like to have to live my life in a state of constant boycott, but they're at war with us, so we should return the favor. And while there are as Bill says, every movie is conservative. 
right? Like, there's, there's no movie about a great committee writing a strongly worded memo. They're all about the hero going out and like doing something amazing. So enjoy entertainment, but, and we have. We've turned off the Oscars. We've made the NFL sweat. Um, keep doing it. Keep doing that. And because of the proliferation of, of various forms of entertainment with YouTube channels and this, and you can't be heavy handed about it, but reward the people who are doing that. Subscribe to those things. Um, buy tickets for, you know, how many of you saw Gosnell, the movie? It was an awesome movie. I know a lot of people were scared by it. Um, buy it on, I don't even know, Netflix or whatever it is. You don't have to watch it, just buy it. Like, pump up the numbers for us. When you're going to go see a movie and uh, you know your wife or girlfriend wants to see the rom-com, but there's also the great, you know, uh, I can't even, I don't even go out. I don't know what was on the movies. So, so there's a movie that's, that's conservative leaning. Buy the tickets for that and then go see the rom-com. I mean, do everything you can to boost the numbers and for, for stuff that's amenable to you and crush the stuff that isn't. For your grandchildren, don't buy them Nike stuff. That's just my personal opinion. I just wanted to let everybody know there is a Facebook group called Informed Parents of California. So if you have children, grandchildren, nephews, nieces, get on that Facebook group. It's full of information and it's full of a lot of on fire people who are organizing all over Southern California. And I just highly recommend it. And I want to get that um, group on that you're doing too. Let them know about that. But it's a great group to get the information out. Their slogan is, whoops, sorry, I just turned off. 858 PM. We will stop at nothing to protect our kids. Okay. Good slogan. Yeah. I have one question, uh, actually an idea too. You brought up this idea of uh, the importance of doing like BYO media churches, trying to get more churches. As you know, you mentioned earlier, the conservatives in general are very tight about nothing in the Dallas, especially in Dallas because of that concern. It seems like one of the things that maybe the first of the big bubble that the Democrats have made about this ballot box is maybe we should require the county or other charges to mail out envelopes for the mail ballots to create a free paid return postage on them. Oh, they're already ahead of you. But see, all these things, though, are going to increase the Democrat vote. They're going to make it mandatory that everyone get an absentee ballot. That's coming down the pipe. You have somebody delivered your ballot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I, th I think you can, you can drop it in any mailbox and it will be delivered even without postage. I'm pretty sure they already have that. Yeah. But the problem is that they're harvesting from people who wouldn't normally vote. A, because they're illegal. B, because they just registered yesterday. C, they, they're college students and they moved out of the state. I mean, they're creating votes where there were none before. And so we have to create them, and it's not even so much the harvesting, we have to get the evangelicals to register. Get people to register and get them to, I mean, I can't tell you how many, I went to a car show, how many people went, I don't vote anymore, it doesn't make any difference. Well, yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. So get people to do that. They don't have to. Do, they don't have to turn in their ballot to you, but they have to vote. Anyone else? Oh, Nelson's coming up. Raul's coming up. Raul. Thank you. My question is, or actually, uh, I think that if we, instead of voting through mail, go down and vote at your polling place, that will solve part of the problem so that they can harvest your ballot. Well, yes. So people going down to the polling places is huge, but you know what they're doing this time? They're gonna take away all the neighborhood polling places. Next election, 2020, it's gonna be just centers. Okay, I have worked at the polling places for the past 17 years as a supervisor, and this is what I do, and this, maybe you might wanna get involved by going through the training and become a polling pool worker and eventually become a supervisor. And this way you can control 
things that are going on in the polling place. Very good point. That is an awesome point. We can volunteer at co co contact your local registrar voters, and you can volunteer, and they get they pay you because the state of California has nothing but money. <laughs> yes, you had made uh, a comment about you need to call a spade a spade. Um, Rush Limbaugh, a couple of months ago, finally disclosed the fact that it's not a Democrat party, but a communist party. The Democrats are using the word socialism. Most Americans are not equating that, which they should, to communism because it's the same. When is all of the leaders in the Republican Party and those in authority going to start telling the people the truth? The common person out on the street does not understand the difference between socialism and communism. Well, I think you're right, and I think a big part of the problem is that conservatives tend to be very nice and polite, and Republican elected officials tend to be the nicest of the nice and polite, and dare I say, spineless, and nothing is more important to them than getting along, which is why what Donald J. Trump did was so unbelievably unprecedented in a field that had so many amazing people, Scott Walker, Ted Cruz, I mean, I loved those guys. And then Donald Trump was the only one that just said it. Well, this is dumb. Why would you let in all these people who want to destroy your country? Why, why would you let in all these people who want to turn your country into the hellhole that they just escaped from? That's not okay. But nobody, but this, this desire to be thought of as good, and I read a great piece by someone who explained when we lost the number of people who used to go to church, and so you knew you were good because you went to church and you followed the Ten Commandments, so now you've got to find some other way to prove you're good. So you recycle, you drive the Tesla, and you vote Democrat. And that's your way of saying, look how virtuous I am. It's, it's, it's a shorthand. So we have to let people know that it's not compassionate at all. That it leads to death, dismay, dismemberment everywhere you go. Someone brings up Medicare for all, point out Charlie Gard. Not allowed by the government of the United Kingdom to leave his hospital bed to seek treatment elsewhere or even die at home in peace? What the hell is that? That is not freedom. Medicare for all is misery for all. Socialism is misery for all except the guys at the top who are like, this is really sweet. And we just have to keep pointing that out. And, you know, yes, so politics is Hollywood for ugly people, and a lot of them are totally wussy and spineless. It's not, was it what Churchill who said? It's not that we need to always choose the right person. We need to make it expedient for the wrong person to do the right thing. Holding feet to the fire. That's all we can do. Thank you so much, Greg. Thank you, everybody.